Okay, welcome everybody to the student symposium. Um, Hi'ile Hobart and I, Natasha Sharma, we're really, really pleased uh, that you are here. We're so thrilled that you're here. This is a student symposium that came out of an idea that uh, Professor Hobart and I had almost a year ago, last spring. Uh, we're both from Hawaii, and we both are researching and writing books on Hawaii, and we thought we should have a class on the Pacific, and even more, we should take the class to the Pacific. So we actually uh, went to Hawaii for a week, and then we are just finishing up the class this, this week right now. So it, it goes without saying that um, to do something like this, to bring students to Hawaii for a week and, and to have a class like this, um, pedagogical experiences like this just don't happen without enormous institutional and individual support by a lot of people uh, that we have to thank, um, both on and off-site uh, in Hawaii and here in Northwestern. And so, as quickly as possible, we are going to go through our long list of thank yous, uh, starting with the folks who we uh, met with on island, uh, Thomas Dye, Muffet Jordan, Kim Kalama, Professor Jennifer Dara at University of Hawaii, Kyle Kajihiro and Auntie Terry Kiko'olani. Uh, also at UH, Professors Bernadette Gonzalez and Ethan Caldwell, Adrian Delion, Hardy Spore, and Nappy of Anuinoi Paddling Club. And then in order to make it possible, we had to raise a lot of funds, as you know. So we really want to thank people and units here at Northwestern. Um, specifically those who helped make the trip possible. Again, this was an eight-day trip that we took all 15 students to Hawaii and they had almost no out-of-pocket um, expenses. So we're very thankful to Asian American Studies program, especially Cheryl Ju, uh, African American Studies, especially E. Patrick Johnson and Suzette Denose, the American Studies program with Ivy Wilson and Imani McFadden, um, the Weinberg College and Office of Research, Dean Adrian Randolph and Mary Finn, uh, we, we also want to thank the Center for Native American and Indigenous Research, especially Patty Lowe and Doug Medine, the Alice Kaplan Institute for the Humanities, especially Tom Bork and Jill Manor, and the School of Education and Social Policy and Latina and Latino Studies. We also have additional co-sponsors to thank that help support this symposium specifically. So in addition to uh, the folks that we already listed that gave us support, we also would like to thank the Global Indigenous Studies Working Group at the Buffett Institute, especially Professor Kelly Weiskopf and the Department of English. Uh, we would have nothing here today without the students. I would say that T.E. and I have amazing taste because out of about 100 applications, we chose the 15 most phenomenal, amazing students. This has been such an amazing experience. So we really want to, what happened over there? Are you acting up? <laughs> Stephanie. Okay. okay, so we really want to thank the students. Yeah, we really want to just thank them for all of their hard work, their thoughts, their contributions. It's just been a spectacular teaching experience for both of us. Before we introduce our fine MCs, I also have to thank my dear friend and colleague, and new mom, her baby is not even two weeks old and the baby is here and Hi'ile is here. I couldn't have done this without you, I wouldn't have done this without you, so thank you Hi'ile. Thank you, Dr. And with uh, no further ado, or is that the right thing? Yes. Without further ado, <laughs> Danielle Underwood and April Navarro are fine MCs. <laughs> Fine, really, because we are. Just, you know. <laughs> but, anyways, as they said, welcome. Um, so, traditionally in Hawaii, a space like this would be opened up by reciting oli or chant to ask permission to enter the space. Um, but because this land is stolen, let me rewind because this land is stolen, um, <laughs> we will open up our symposium by acknowledging the stolen land on which Evanston resides. So here is NASA member and our uh, Ho'o Aloha, Makasha. Welcome everyone. I'd like to take this time to recognize that the land upon which Northwestern University stands are the traditional homelands of the people of the Council of Three Fires, including the Potawatomi, Ojibwe, and Odawa. It was also a site of trade, travel, gathering, and healing for more than a dozen other native tribes and is still home to over 100,000 tribal members in the state of Illinois. It is in, within Northwestern's obligation to acknowledge and honor this history and for all of us to keep in mind as we occupy the space tonight. Thanks. Thank you so much, Natasha. Go ahead, give a round of applause. Right, uh, before 
before we begin, we'd like to give a brief overview of our field study in Hawaii. That's right, so for those of you who weren't following our really popular NU Hawaii Instagram page, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown of what happened. Uh, so as our professor said, we before we began this class, we had an eight-day immersive trip on the island of Oahu. Um, and while we were there, we did a lot of field research, let me tell you. Uh, so from helping to build a fish pond to taking a demilitarized detour and even cultivating taro, uh, we traveled to almost every single part of the island as we attempted to just better understand the dynamics of race and indigeneity within Hawaii as well as the larger Pacific. Uh, so thank you for coming and, you know, attempting to ease some of that settler guilt we all have. Um, before we jump into things, let's talk game plan. So tonight we're going to have three panels uh, spread throughout. We're going to have some tasting. I would say also our panels are a little bit of a tasting as well. We really only have six minutes to go through all of us. But if you want to read 13, 20 page research papers, be my guest. Um, so yeah, after the panel, um, after each tasting, please put all your garbage underneath the seats and we'll connect, collect it at the end. And after the last panel, panel I'm nervous, can't you tell? Um, dinner will be provided, which you know we all know you came for that, let's be honest. But you have to work for it first, so. But get your Tupperware ready, ladies and gentlemen. I brought mine, so. Alright, <laughs> to kick things off, there's some seats here too if anyone wants to sit down. Um, so to kick things off, we want to welcome the beautiful Elise. She'll be sharing a few words about kava, our first tasting of the night. Hi, um, so in the back you can get kava, it's also known as ava in Hawaii, and also yakona and saku in Samoa and Fiji, respectively. So the drink is like made from a root that denotes the name. So um, it's pounded and water is added. And also, so we took it from, we ordered it from Tropicava, which is a um, cafe in River Park. So this strain, or like this, you know, um, beverage that you're consuming right now isn't, it's as close as you can get to the actual thing without going to the Pacific. Um, so yeah, there are health benefits associated with it, so we hope you can try some if you want, and you can raise your hand right now, and people can pass you some if you haven't had some. So yeah. Anybody for second? All right, so thank you so much, Elise, for telling us a little bit about, more about our first tasting, which is kava. Um, and with that, let's hop right into our first panel, uh, which is all about roots, by the way. So the concept of roots refers to a sense of groundedness in land, tradition, and culture. The projects in this panel will thus highlight the importance of looking to the past um, as we further understand indigenous epistemologies and cultural practices as they relate to sovereignty and reclamation of land and culture in the Pacific Islands. Now, a lot of y'all are gonna, looking at me sideways because I know that was a mouthful, but don't worry, we're going to break it down for you um, in this first panel. So I hope you enjoy. So start with a round of applause. Also, our wonderful inspiration. <laughs> focusing on hula in three contexts. First, hula performed and taught by native Hawaiian kumu hulas or hula masters. Second, hula performed for tourists. And finally, the overlap between these two conditions when native Hawaiian dancers perform in both tourist arenas and Hawaiian movements. My goal here is to complicate the binary of good and bad hula representations by examining the repercussions of tourist shows while also recognizing Hawaiian dancers' agency in choreographing and performing in such contexts. I will look at several prominent tourist website descriptions of hula to examine ongoing American commodification. I will introduce Native Hawaiian Kuma Hula Dr. Pualani Kanaka Aule Kanahele's perspective on hula in the context of the Hawaiian cultural renaissance. And lastly, I will focus on Kini Kapahu, who performed for the Hawaiian monarchy, as well as in, quote, erotic spectacle shows in the continental United States. Growing up in the continental United States, I am familiar with images of Hawaii that narrate a tropical American paradise characterized by pretty, smiling hula dancers. United Airlines, Universal Fruit Co., and various other companies spread and propagate the image of the enticing hula girl. 
These narratives match current Hawaiian tourist website Go Hawaii's assertion that, quote, hula has become a worldwide symbol of Hawaiian culture. Similarly, the Polynesian Cultural Center, or PCC, website asserts that hula has evolved into a modern form that is famous for its grace and music. The PCC site also claims, after contact with Europeans, Hawaiians adapted Western music but added their own unique influences. Over the past two centuries, hula has lost almost all of its religious significance and has become entertainment. I agree with the Hawaii in that hula has become a prevalent symbol, but what simplifications are made to prettily package this symbol? Who is doing the simplification and why? Both websites use passive language in regards to how hula, quote, has become, has evolved, has lost, and intentionally avoid giving reasons or assigning responsibility for these changes. In doing this, Go Hawaii and the PCC censor any notions of colonial oppression shaping hula. Go Hawaii avoids recognizing white American advertisers' intentional exploitation of the female hula dancer by writing, <laughs> by writing that hula, quote, has become a symbol. The PCC's assertion that the ancient dance has evolved works to erase a history of the United States imposing restrictions on hula, as well as Native Hawaiian movements to revive and reclaim hula. Similarly, when the PCC frames European contact as only, quote, adding Western elements to hula, they ignore and erase the United States systemic, intentional colonial violence. Lastly, the PCC statement that hula has lost religious meaning and has become purely entertainment exemplifies the settler moves to innocence that define continental tourist interaction with indigenous Hawaiian performance. By placing the era of active Hawaiian culture in the past as, quote, lost, tourists justify the comfortable consumption of apolitical entertainment in a settler state.